Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to BC310, our course on church and ministry administration. Let's pray and we'll get started, please. Father, we thank you for this time together. And as we learn practical things, we pray you give each of us understanding. Help us remember these things and uh, help us, Lord, to make use of it as opportunities arise in life and ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So we've been um, talking about managing finances in church and ministry. So we were in lesson number 11, finance, accounting, and budgeting. And uh, we just started this last week. We talked about some principles that guide us in how we raise money, how we receive money into the ministry to do the work of the ministry. Uh, then we get we started talking about some practical things. You know, it's good always to use a software system to keep your funds and. Um, also to how you can further work with the money, right? So the way we do it is uh, when, when money comes to the church, uh, people, most people make their contribution to what we call as a general church fund. It goes into that fund. So when people give tithes offerings, many times when people give money to the church, they don't say, oh, use it for this. Most people won't say it. They just give it to the church. So all of that money goes into the general fund. Hmm? From that fund, we then allocate amounts to the various ministries in the church. So example, money to pay all the staff salaries money to pay for our outreach pastors, churches, the money for paying the rents, all the buildings that we are renting, money for all the other things, it's all going for different ministries, conferences, events like that, it will be uh, allocated. Sometimes people will give money very specifically for something. They'll say, I'm giving this money for publications. I mean, giving this money to support the outreach churches. I'm giving this money for missions. Right? So if people give money like that, then that amount is designated for that particular use. So we will say, okay, for missions, so much money has been designated. People have given that amount for that. So we will use, use that money. But usually, there's always a need for more than that, you know. So it will be used up and plus more money will come from general fund. It will go there to take care of the work that's going on. Right? But what I was uh, emphasizing towards the end of the last class was everything is accounted under the particular head in which the money is coming or going. From general fund, it will go to, say, missions. From missions, it will be used for various mission-related things, like, for example, uh, we have youth missions conference next week. Okay, from it'll go from the missions fund, youth missions conference. So, it when the expenses for youth missions conference will be recorded that way. So, if we want to know how much we spent for youth missions conference, we will know exactly. This is how much we spent for which year, 2024, 2023. How much we spent. You know, so like that we will know correctly. So for many different activities that are happening, everything is accounted with the header, it's called the header, with the heading of that particular expense. You know, right down to the event that happened. Example, men's conference. Now men's conference has been going on for so many years. So for every year, Men's conference, that amount, what was spent total, you know, we know correctly, we know that is what was spent. Right? So we can track everything. Right? And uh, it helps us manage the money 
better. Now, all this is done inside the software system, so you don't have to worry. Just the accountant, as they're entering in, they will mark that this amount was spent for that particular ministry. So page 46, finance department. So basically, uh, in the ministry, you need people who will help with managing the finances. Hmm? So I am not sitting and I am not doing accounting. <laughs> I don't know. Right? I don't, I'm not involved. It is the accountants. The accountant, I mean, the people, the three or four people there, they are handling everything. Hey, I will get a report at the end of the month. I will get, I will know. Right? Now, of course, during the month, day to day, uh, I approve expenses. That means, like, we have a rule anything below 5,000, accountant can pay directly. Anything more than 5,000 rupees, it has to be approved. Only then the accountant will pay. So the, a request will come, I will approve, then the accountant will pay. So I'm that to that way, I am I know what is happening. It's not like I don't know what is happening. I know what is happening because the approval has to happen. To that extent, I know. And then at the end of the month, there will be a report, a couple of reports. I'll, I'll mention that, right? But we need people dedicated to handle the finances. So in the beginning, when we started, we had uh, an accountant, one lady. Will, so we 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 uh, we worked with an outside accounting firm. Right? So uh, APC was just starting, but an outside accounting firm, Christian. The owner was Christian. Our people were all the working were you know anybody, accountants. So we can say, okay, you, can you help? us with the accounting. In the beginning, one lady used to come for two hours every week because nothing much to be done. You know, those days, our congregation was 20 people, 10, 20 people, little money. Think, okay, she will put it in the Even that little money, she'll put in the system and the money will deposit in the bank. That was her duty. Only for two hours, that's it. Okay. Then slowly, uh, as things began to grow, the, this account, outside accountant will come, maybe half a day she will spend. Then one full day. As the number of you know, amount, I think number of work, you know, or transactions, because so many bills, payments and bills and all that, lit work increased. And then we had staff and all that, so they, they had to make uh, staff salary payments, all those things, working. So that kept on going. Then after some time, okay, we need they they need to come for two days every week. Okay, you come for two days every week. Basically, finish your work. But we did not have an internal accountant. Everything was from outside. The person will come, do the work for us, and go. So only uh, I would say maybe in 2016 or something like that. So when we started from 2001 for first 15 years, we didn't have a full time internal accountant it was only an external person coming they will do everything and go and we will pay them of course they're consultants so we will pay them for their work but i think only in 2016 or somewhere that 16 or 17 uh we had our uh one our admin person would give some of her time to put all the bills and everything together right so she was not an accountant but She'll keep everything or in order. And the accountant will come and you know do all the put everything in system, make the payments, everything and go. And 2018 is when we hired our first full-time accountant. And so we had one person join us as a full-time account because the work was now so much, a lot of work to be done. So our the external accounting firm said, you know, why don't you hire one person full time? Let him do all the basic work, get everything done. Then they will send their accountant every week also to check everything and uh, do the work. So, uh, so the point is in the beginning stages of the church or the ministry, you don't need a full time accountant. Once the, the volume of work becomes a lot, then you can bring a full-time account at the right time. Okay. So for us, it happened after 
almost uh, you know, 17, 18 years. So then we had an uh, internal accountant, and uh, uh, we had an external accountant. So right now, basically, we have just an internal accountant, external accountant, and external auditor. That means, uh, so we have internal accountant. Now, right now, it's Geetu, Geetu ma'am. She will handle everything. Now, she has a lot of work because so much, so every day to day, everything is happening, payments to be made. And when people send contributions, sometimes they request for a receipt and all that. So a lot of work is going on. So she's busy. She's the internal accountant. Then every week, an external accountant will come to check everything. So two people are checking. So she does her work. External accountant comes, checks everything, and puts it into tally. So after he checks, it goes into the system. He checks all everything, it goes. Then uh, there is also an external auditor. That means auditor means another person. Actually, there are uh, the auditing firm is separate from the accounting firm. So the audit auditing firm has two other people. They will come and check every six months. They will check everything. Sometimes we do it every every quarter, but I think from last year we moved it to six months. So every six months they'll come, they'll check everything. It's a separate auditing firm. So so that way there's no chance of anything going wrong. And so we have internal accountant, external accountant, one from one uh, one accounting firm sends their external account. We'll check our internal accountant's work. Then there's a separate auditing firm for sending two people to check everything. So if there's any problems, they'll tell us. We will have discussion how to solve things. And it is also the responsibility of the accounting firm to tell us what are the rules. Because every year, the government could come up with some new rules. you know, And we have to follow the rules. Okay, so they will tell us, they'll keep us informed. Okay, now this is the rule, you have to follow this. Okay, okay, and we have to make changes and follow the rules, right? So that is how our finance department works. It's very important because we want to keep the money all in proper order. And if any church person, like any person from the church, or if anyone from the government come and ask us, we should be able to answer. Right? We should be able to show the records. We should be able to you know, give a clear answer. Right? Now, it is usually the government who will ask questions. And they'll send a note or a thing, uh, come and tell us what happened. You know? So we, people, our uh, external accountant will go. They represent us. They will go. They will answer in everything they'll do. So that is there. That will keep happening. The government is watching. You know, so uh, they may ask questions, you know, what about this, what about that, you have to answer. So now, um, so that's the, just an overview of the finance department, how it is working, right? So we have one internal accountant, one external accountant, and an auditor, external auditors, two people are there to check. Everything. Now, uh, what we try to follow and what we have been following from beginning is or what we refer to as a two-person rule. That means we have to make sure that at least two people are seeing every transaction that happens in the ministry. So everywhere money is happening, at least two people must see it. Right. So example, when we're doing offering counting, we have a of a tree team. So it is not one person. It is usually two or more people who will count. So purposely we say that. Right? Uh, so at least two people are there. If one person is there, temptation is more to do something wrong. Two people are there, at least another person, hey, don't do that. You know, Somebody is there to tell them. Yeah, three, it is better. But it is simple rule, two person rule. Keep at least two people everywhere where money is flowing. Right? So that's why once the money comes from our location, any location where they counted, inside 
there are more than one person checking. So Geeta will check. Then weekly, the other accountant will also come and check. Then every six months, two auditors are checking. So it's more than one person who is seeing what's happening. You know, so anybody can ask. Anybody can check and say, "Hey, something is wrong." You know, so wherever possible, at least two people must be checking. If you have more people, is good. You know, so just a simple rule. Um, so now, in receipt of offering and contributions, uh, so counting happens at the location, and at each location there is a notebook. People write down what money came. Now we encourage people to nowadays to give online because an online means it goes straight to the bank. So that whole manual thing is uh, it saves us a lot of time and effort and all that. So. We try to tell people give online, but still some people uh, give on Sundays in the offering bag. But so that has to be counted. They may put some check or cash. That has to be counted, it is written in a notebook, put in a sealed envelope, and it is brought to the church office on Monday. Monday, uh, so it is kept safe on a uh, brother church on Monday. So Tuesday, Geetha will count and she will compare everything. What is inside the offering with what is written on the envelope, it it should match. Right? And what is in the notebook, what is on the envelope should match. Right? Then she will go and she will make the deposit in the bank. So that money is put in the bank. Again, another receipt is collected. So all these three things should be same. Okay? The receipt of deposit in the bank what was recorded in the office, what was recorded at the church. All must match. Then you know, money that came went into the bank. And Geetha is checking. When the auditor comes, he will also, the accountant, external accountant comes, he will also see the whole thing. OK, everything is fine. No issues. Okay. Um, now, most people, uh, we are encouraging most people to do direct deposit. That means we put it straight in the bank. So then this manual process is avoided. And a uh, few people may send an email saying, I have sent uh, so much money. Please tell, please confirm you have received it. So that for that, Geetu has to check the bank account and she has to send them a reply by email saying, Yeah, we have received the amount, etc. So some people may do that. Most people don't do that. They just send the money, they know it's gone to the church. But sometimes some people send an email asking for confirmation. And so uh, we send an acknowledgement about for their contribution. All right. Now, accounting policies and procedures. You all with me so far? A little boring, huh? Money. <laughs> OK. Uh, accounting policies and procedures. Now, vendor verification. So here's the thing. We have to work with many vendors. Vendors means people who are outside who are giving us service. For example, catering. Like we are not, we don't have cooks, and uh, we are not cooking the food. We are given that job to one vendor. He said, "This is the menu. Every every day you bring this to the Bible College, like that." So we have many vendors. So if you see on Sunday morning, uh, some of the equipment is not ours. It is the vendor, you know, who brings it who sets it up, takes it back. When we have events, there are vendors from outside. Uh, the things we need, hardware, this, all, all vendors. No, we have to be careful when we're working with vendors. First of all, we do not pay vendors by cash. Only we pay from bank to bank. That way, in the middle, nobody can make any cut and make anything. Secondly, the only cash payment is for manual labor. Sometimes we, for example, in Central, um, uh, we need people to move the heavy after service. They take it from there. They take it up. So those are some manual labor. They'll only come for two hours like that. So in certain, uh, as far as possible, we try to avoid cash payment. So for every, when anybody wants to work with us, we say, please give us your PAN card, other card. 
we will put you in our system. You give us your bank detail. So it will go directly bank to bank. No cash. The only cases sometimes when we need manual labor, they work only for cash. Because they'll only work one day or half a day to do some job. So there, OK, we have to give cash. We give cash. But we have a voucher. They have to sign. We will take their, uh, what is that, other card copy. So we have a proof that that cash has gone to that particular person. You know? So the goal is we have want to be careful so that there is no mismanagement of money anywhere in between. You know, because sometimes what happens, and I'm not saying you know our people are doing it, our people all are good, but we don't want any temptation. Because sometimes somebody can say, hey, they can tell the vendor, see, vendor, they ask the vendor, how much is it? And they will say 12,000 rupees. He will say, you give bill for 14. I will get you this thing. For 2,000, you give me. So we won't know. Because if he has that arrangement with the vendor, we won't know. Vendor will send a bill for 14. We will pay the vendor. Then the vendor gives 2,000 here. So this man is also benefiting middle. We don't want that kind of thing to happen. So we have a vendor verification process. Right? So that means, first of all, before we select a vendor for a particular thing, we get quotes from three different people, three different vendors. This is a standard procedure for a new thing. Right? Once we have selected a vendor, we work with that same vendor for a long time. As long as they're good, we don't change. But in the beginning, suppose we are finding a vendor for something, get quote from three different people. We compare the quote. We also have a form the vendor has to sign. And in the form, the vendor has to sign that they will not do any malpractice. They will not pay any commission to any of our people. So it is part of that vendor services agreement. So we're telling them, see, this is how we want to work. We want to work very clean. No commission here and there. Direct, and you sign. So they sign it. Now, sometimes people can, in spite of they'll sign it and still do something wrong. But at least we have that check. Three vendors select somebody, then make them sign this document, vendor services agreement. We want to work clean. You send the bill within two days, we will pay you. All that thing is there. But uh, so we have all this in place. So that is the vendor verification process. You know. Uh, to make sure that we work. And the people we work with, if they're good, we will stay with them. No need to change. So then they build trust. And uh, we have a good rapport. And they will do extra work for us. We ask some requests. You know, they will be happily do because of the relationship. But in the beginning, we go through this vendor verification, make sure there is nobody getting any, you know, uh, any cut in between, nobody's doing anything. We try to be uh, as uh, careful as possible. Um, for purchases, like I mentioned earlier, there has to be a pre-approval. So usually what happens is for any event, so we have ministry leaders. There is, they have different ministry areas. Before the ministry leader can spend money, first of all, they have to send a budget. Uh, they send an uh, estimate. Let's take an example. OK, next week there is youth missions conference. Now, uh, Pastor Nancy, Ramya is responsible for that. Now, now that Shikha has come, she's slowly taking over the mission's work. But let's assume only Pastor Nancy was involved. What will happen? About six months before the event, she will send a budget estimate. That means, OK, for Youth Missions Conference, uh, we're going to have it in this venue. So this year, again, we're going to Asherabad Global Learning Center. Cost for the venue. So I said an Excel sheet. Every expense is put, cost is put. Mm -hmm. Travel. Uh, at that time, we won't know how many people are traveling. We'll have an estimate. Let's say 250 people are coming. This is the amount, food, everything. So everything will be put on. So we know. And because we have done it in the past, like last year also we did it, we, it is easier to do it now because we have that same uh, budget. But six months before, she'll send. 
this end. and of course we'll check the cost with everybody whatever rent um everything whatever okay so send it i will look at it very quick i mean when i don't spend more than 10 minutes look at it just check everything all makes sense yeah if there is something that is not necessary i will say cut it off so for example this year last year we had led screens but this year i said let's get rid of it we'll just use the projector so that saved us i don't know maybe i forget the amount maybe 30000 rupees or something so I said, let's not need, because last year we did it, uh, okay, it was there, but maybe it was not that useful. It was a small auditorium, 300 people, uh, we, we'll save some money. So I said, to take that off, and then uh, we made some changes this year. So that was one. Sound system. Oh, so when, uh, oh yeah, and then video production. We had lights and cameras and all last year. And I said, uh, so after we did all the recording, we didn't do anything, didn't use it. And I said, that is that was a waste. So let us not do that again this year. No need cameras, no need those lights. So we saved maybe another 30,000 there. Because <laughs> last year we did it, it was not useful. So take it off. OK, take it off. And so like that, we made changes. So this year, our expense may be uh, uh, maybe lesser or maybe about the same, but I think the number of people who are coming, I don't know what the final is, maybe a little bit more. Uh, I think there are 300 people or something. Anyway, so I think the number of people who are coming are maybe more this year compared to last year. So that cost will go up, the food and uh, that cost will go up. But we have cut out some things. So this is the advantage of doing a budget early. Like we can look at it and say, okay, hey, this was not useful, this will take it off, take it off. Uh, we save money, then I will approve that budget. So, Geetu, our accountant knows what the expense is going to be for youth missions conference. And then they start, okay, they start spending the money, which is you book the hall, you all the water extend, buy the tickets, do this, do that, promotion, everything starts going on. And Geetu is watching, meaning if any bill comes, she has the budget. Is it correct? paid right if it is more she will ask why what happened and it may come back to me saying hey something this is uh, you know they have spent more money here more means if it's 1000 2000 okay but it's something more than 5000 rupees than what was planned then we have to ask why what happened there has to be a reason for it so we will check you know so, but if the budget is approved, anything in that budget can be paid right away because the whole thing has been checked and approved. So that is how that say that is one of the events. So, like this, we do for every event. You know, everything is uh, there's a budget, and, and then also every department, example, publications. We tell at the beginning of the year. This year, I think this year was, um, I think we started the, uh, two crore, I think two crore. So we told publications teams, this year you have a budget of two crores. So whatever you do, you this is your budget. So printing of the books, uh, which is, you know, the books in, I think, so many languages they have to do. Uh, 15 languages or something like that. Uh, the posting of the books, all those things. You, know? you have to, every the whole year, you have to manage within two crores. Renting, we have rent of warehouse, all this. We have to manage it. That is your budget. So they have to plan. Now, all these books, we're going to print, cost of printing, everything, and see how you can save money. So we have arrangement with the printer. See, if, if with the printer, if you can give them bulk orders, the cost will come down. You know, so we have arrangement with printer saying, okay, we will buy. I, I think we bought so many tons of paper. Um, I forget the amount of tons, like fifty tons of paper, something, with the printer. So printer, you buy this this much of paper because we are going to print so much. 
and uh, we will buy buy that for you you keep it for us so our cost of printing will come down because you're buying bulk paper white paper the same thing okay so we'll arrange he'll buy that paper keep it then we through the year we will use right but we're also checking yeah uh, we know how much everything is being checked okay yeah it is within budget if anything goes wrong, uh, then we have to uh, pause. So this year, what happened? It was unexpected. We started the year. Then we had a request from one ministry in Meghalaya, in Shillong, Shillong for our books. Now, usually, when people request for books, we only send them five titles. Five title. But this judge, they requested all 40. All 40. Uh, the request, I think, I, I don't know. I think all 40 titles. Uh, I think, I uh, forget now. I forget the exact number, but it was 6,000 copies or something. So if you think 40 titles, 6,000 each. You know, uh, uh, my numbers may be wrong, but it is ex it may not be exact, but it's something like this, a big number. So in the month of January, we somebody sent, uh, I mean, we had this request and it was a huge printing work. Uh, January or February, they did it and sent. Anyway, suddenly uh, we saw money had spent like almost... Uh, Within that month, uh, I forget how much we had. We had spent a huge amount. And I saw the account. So I get every month, end of the month, I get uh, I get the uh, you know the account statement. January, February, and I suddenly saw that we had we were way out of budget. Out of budget means the expense within the two months was so much. And uh, then I said, what happened? Uh, numbers are all gone then no no we had this request for so many books and we have sent it I said no you should have told them we'll only send you five titles five titles not we can't send you all 40 titles you know uh, because look at the amount we have already spent on one location we like to distribute our books across many churches many ministries you don't want to give everything to one okay but we had already committed, money already spent, books already sent. Now I'm seeing the numbers. So, oh, so it was. Uh, it really shook us up this year, beginning of the year, and uh, already done. Now the good side was that at that particular conference in Shillong, they had people coming from different parts of India, from uh, I think. 13 or 14 other states. So I said, okay, at least it has gone to one location, but people are coming from many places. So at least it will go to many states. Okay, one concept. But I said, see, this must not happen again. The rule is you only send five titles. If they want more, let them ask. And we will only send it to people who are interested. But now we have sent... 40 titles, 6,000 copies, uh, huge amount. So that uh, that we had, it took us a while to recover from that uh, whole uh, thing. And so during the course of this year, we had to make a lot of changes. And I was, we had to be strict on our expenses. All I was trying to cut out many areas. So that happened this year. So that's why in the middle of the year, uh, I was cutting down on a lot of other things. So that's why, you know, Youth Missions Conference, take this off, take this off. Right? Everywhere possible, we want to save money because at the beginning of the year, suddenly we have uh, uh, unexpectedly spent more uh, here, you know. So, so some things happen. I mean, it's not a bad thing, but... It is a place where, you know, when it comes to money, we have to be careful. Right? And sometimes when these kinds of things happen, you know, uh, we have to take some corrective action. And uh, 
you know, so the, of course, it's a lesson for the publications team to learn. Hey, do be careful. Don't do like this because it impacts everything else and, you know, all those things. So um, there are sometimes, sometimes these kinds of things happen and we have to, you know, then during the course of the year, we have to be careful, manage things properly and so on. Anyway, so that happened this year. Just one, one example where we had to take some action, corrective action and watch over ourselves, right? So, yeah, so I spoke about, okay, so payroll. Um, so, okay, let me talk about payment priority. So what happens is we have a rule that we should make all vendor payments within two days. So it's for us a policy. If a vendor sends a bill, within two days you pay that person. As long as they've delivered their work, pay it to them. Uh, you know, many corporates will give 30 days, sometimes 60 days, they'll take to pay. So let us be better than that. We have the money, they have provided the service, they're sending us a bill, pay them as quickly as possible. So as a practice, as a church, we pay everybody well. And now I've heard ministries, and it's very sad because, you know, when we do conferences with uh, around the country, for example, you know, when we do, uh, I've worked with other ministries you know, in Delhi, we've done a big ministry. One year later, I will meet some pastors, I will meet some, they'll say, you know, pastor, you came for that conference, yeah, that pe those people, one year, they have still not paid the bill. You know, it was very sad, you know, that they came, they did the conference, they told everybody, all the vendors to come and, you know, do their work. The vendors came, they did. But they didn't get paid. Uh, sometimes one year later, they haven't got paid. They feel very bad. And it leaves a very bad impression on the church or the ministry. You know, that they say, I will never work with these people again. You know, because they're not paid. So we shouldn't be like that. So I tell our, our from our policies, within two days, 48 hours, we make payment. You know, make sure they get them. So our vendors are happy. They're happy to work with us because. We send the bill within two days, they'll send give us the payment. And if sometimes they get the payment same day, you know, because uh, depending on uh, what's happening, they'll get the payment same day. Send the bill, we know you've done the work, pay. But that's payment priority. We keep that here. Yeah. Payroll, all so payroll on the last day of the month, all our staff get paid salary. No delay in salary. Again, it's another rule. Uh, consultants by the third, because consultants, they have to fill up their timesheet and then the calculation has to be done and they get paid. So this is our rule. Last day of the month, all the staff will get paid. By the third of the month, all the consultants will get paid. Now, if the consultant don't fill up timesheet, then they, it's their fault, but generally, Everybody does it, so everybody gets paid. So it's a rule. We don't hold salary like for one week later to a car. We don't know, but not pay. Right? The uh, yeah. So we that's been the way we have worked all along. We never missed that. Never missed that. And then we have expense claim, which means if uh, sometimes people from our staff, mostly our staff, they may pay for something then they can get the money back from the church, reimbursement. But they have to send us the bill, and they have to submit the bill and uh, send it as an email. Uh, then it goes to Geetu. She checks everything and gets paid. Right? And if the expense is more than 5000 they have to get it pre-approved. That means before you spend it, get it approved. You spend it, then you get the money back. Right? And um, tax payments, so... We make sure that uh, you know we we follow the government regulations in paying tax and petty cash. Like I mentioned, is only used when we have to pay. Example like manual labor or you know if you have to purchase some groceries or something small things, uh, petty cash. Otherwise, we avoid using petty cash. Uh, let me pause here for now. Any questions so far? How we work. I hope you are not getting bored. <laughs> Any questions on the accounting side? There's some more that we need to cover. 
But any questions? So, regarding yes, yes. Is it necessary for an external auditor to come and check or will not be there enough with the accountant who is working inside the ministry? Mm. Um, so auditing as a standard practice uh, should be done by a separate, uh, separate from the internal accountants. Of course, internal accountants who are they're, they're working uh, and they are also checking. But by practice, audit means somebody independent is coming and checking everything. Independent means we we also know them. That person is also a believer, uh, and he is sending two of his uh, accountants. Just that they are not the ones who actually did the work. So they have no bias see the people who did the work they will try to you know if even if they made a mistake they will try to i mean other people who don't do it they, they acknowledge the mistake but they may try to cover it up whereas an independent auditor they have not done the work they come in to check somebody else's work and make sure everything so by def by practice audit is always done by a separate now uh for a for a Christian ministry, that is not a requirement, but it's a good practice. Right? So, example, we don't need to do it, but it's a good thing to do it for our own safety and also for us to let others know that it is being audited. That means it's being checked. So it's a good practice. Anything else? Yeah, go ahead. Ravali, yes, go ahead. Um, Pastor, uh, I know you mentioned that uh, kind of or made a point that you're not taking any um, funds from the international funds as such uh, for the church. So uh, what were the, I mean, main reasons behind taking that decision? Mm -hmm. So from the very beginning, when we when we came back to India to start ABC, um, one of the things, at least in those days, uh, uh, what I felt was a lot of the mindset, the mindset among Indian pastors and Indian ministers, ministers in India. I'm talking about you know in the early 2000s. The mindset was, oh, if you want to do ministry in India, you must have foreign support. I don't know, maybe nowadays people still think like that. But those days, that was a big thought. If you wanted to start a church, you wanted to do ministry, you must have somebody from outside India supporting you. So when we came back, we said, we are going to break that idea. We're going to show people that we can do ministry without foreign support. So that was very clear. So from the beginning, uh, we did not register for uh, the FCRA. Uh, we said we won't do it. There were times when, you know, account also said, hey, why don't you do it? You can, you, you know, you can get some money. But uh, so, okay, uh, no need. It's we want to show people, we want to be example to people that you can do ministry in India without foreign support. And that is the motivation behind it. And so till today, we didn't apply for FCRA. And all the money is just local, like, you know, people, what people give here locally. And it's only through Indian bank accounts. Now, after we started the online Bible college, and uh, that was uh, during the pandemic in 20 to 2020, and uh, initially everything was free. 2021, the accountant told us, uh, you know, you're legally, you can receive funds from outside India for educational purposes. That means you can't receive it as a contribution, but if for an educational service, the church is allowed to receive funds. So then we opened it up and said, you know, for international students, again, everything is free, but if you want to pay for your course, and it's a very small amount, I think we put it as a, 
I don't know what, five dollars or I don't know, some small amount we put. If you want to pay, you can pay. Right. So you know, maybe a few students, uh, not maybe a, a few students, maybe I would say less than ten, maybe students have so far, you know, made some um, uh, small contributions for their own education, for studying with us, which we are legally allowed to receive. So that's the only money. It's a very small amount, and we're not dependent on it at all. It's just an option thing that some foreign students have opted to send some money, very small. But other than that, uh, we've not received money. Now, there are some Indian people who have settled abroad, who have an Indian bank account. And sometimes through their Indian bank account, they still give some offerings to APC. But it's not from outside India. They may be living there, but because they were here and they had an Indi have an Indian bank account, they give their offerings and all. So that is the only thing that comes. But it's not US dollars or anything. It's just all money from within India. I hope I answered your question. Probably. Yes, Pastor. Thank you so much. Chiram, your question? Like it's about spending money uh, in traveling for mm -hmm. colleges. So one day I, I was talking with just my friends, like uh, so many were spending for us to going hostel, coming back for peers and all. Mm. So, so there's any plan for APC so that they will have their own bus or TT like that? I just want to know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will definitely buy our own bus and tempo travel and all that. But we are thinking about once we go to our own campus, you know. See, the thing is, when you buy a bus or you buy a TT, there's a lot of other costs. Like, you have to have drivers to drive it. You have to have maintenance for it. So now, no, no headache for us. Somebody else is doing it. <laughs> they have to maintain. They have to make sure that we only pay them a fixed amount for uh, the thing. Yeah, it is an expense. It's part of our Bible college expense. Uh, but it's it's a fixed amount. I'll, we don't have to worry about the vehicle, the maintenance, driver, all that. Now, once we set up our own campus, uh, Devanali, uh, then yeah, we might buy one or two buses to bring people, take them out, all those things. Then we can put it to good use. You know, uh, we can. Yeah. For now, this is this works because it's only short distance. Yeah. Yeah. So, so here at APC, we all plan everything ahead, right? Mm -hmm. Like even for some events that happens next year, also we start planning earlier. So what are the some uh, guidelines or some things that we can look out when making a budget? Because we can't be sure that in this budget, like we'll fix a budget, like this is the budget for it. So any guidelines, how we can keep a, like this is the budget, mm -hmm. planning budget for events, some yeah. guidelines. So, uh, so generally what we do is we look, at the previous three years for that same event. So if it is a, an event we have been doing before, then we look at previous year's budgets. So we know and uh, we know what are the general expenses towards that. Okay, this new year, new year, the cost could have gone up, but you know, if sometimes well, we can also learn from last year. Okay, maybe we don't need these unnecessary expense, take it out. You know, so it can go both ways. If it's a totally new event, which we haven't done before, then we have to follow the same thing. That is, put down all the items for which we are expecting uh, we're going to spend money. Like right from the venue to the promotions to uh, the food, um, then the handouts. Everything is put down, even stage decor or uh, LED sound system. Everything that we're going to spend money is put down in the spreadsheet. And yes, like, you know, there may be some unexpected expense, but that, that unexpected expense, if it is small, it's okay. But if it's something very big, then it has to be approved. You know? 
But generally, when we go through this exercise of right putting everything down, we would have covered, I would say, like 98, 99 percent, we cover everything. Like, because we know, okay, to have an event or a conference or a, a mission trip, or this is what is involved. So we generally cover everything. There may be some unexpected expense, then yeah, we will, if it comes up, if it's small, it's okay. But if it's something very big, we will have to, we'll discuss and add to it. Yeah. Go ahead. Last question before break. Yeah. So, Pastor, like, uh, can I ask it after the break, Pastor? It's already. Oh, okay. We'll, uh, we'll take your question out of the break. Okay, everyone, we'll go for a break. 10 minutes. We'll be back at 11. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.